Hey, what is going on everyone? This is the second video in the How to Make a Calculator app series. If you missed the first part, I'd click the link in the top right hand corner or check the link down in the description below. For this video, what I'd like to get done is actually adding some background to our buttons. Right now, they're just a blank square. What I'd like to do is add a little bit more shape so we can kind of see them a little bit more. So let's get started. So the first thing that I'd like to get done is actually adding some background to our buttons. So to do that, we're going to come over to our resource folder and then down to the drawable and we're going to create a new drawable file. So you do that by right clicking onto the drawable folder, new drawable resource file. And then all we have to do is name it. I'm going to name it circle. And then I'm going to keep everything else as the default and then click OK. And then this is going to create a new file within our drawable resource. And then within here, right now we're just looking at the preview. If we come up to the top right hand corner, we can click this middle button and we'll be able to see the code associated to this file. So within the selector, I want to define a new item. So we're going to use the item tag, close that. And then within the item tag, what we want to do is include a shape. So we're going to use the shape tag, close that. And then within here, we're going to add an argument. It's an Android shape and we want this equal to a rectangle. Now I know that might be a little bit weird because we want to create a circle, but is because within this shape tag, we're going to be adding a tag that will allow us to round the corners. And this will be helpful when we're resizing our buttons. When the buttons are at their smallest point, it'll be a circle. But when they get a little bit bigger than that, they'll kind of be like an elongated rectangle with rounded corners. It'll just give the app a nicer feel. So to round the corners, all you have to do is use the corners tag. We'll close that off. And then within the corners tag, we're going to add an Android argument, the radius, and we're going to set that to something really high. So I'm just going to go 1000 dp. And then right now we can't see anything, so we're going to add a color to it by typing in solid, close that tag. And then within here, we're going to add an argument, Android colors, and then we're going to give it a color. Now I already have a color that I picked out before the video. I'm going to go with this one. It's like a nice deep navy blue. And now if we take a look over to the right, you'll see that we actually have our shape of our first button right here. So now we can come over to our main activity and apply that shape to each of our buttons, except for the backspace, because we're going to create something a little bit different for that. So we're going to come back over to the top right hand corner, click this middle button so we can see the XML associated with our activity main. And then within each of these buttons, we're going to have to assign a background. So the way we do that is by using another Android attribute, colon, and then we'll type in background. And now we're going to reference our drawable resource and then the circle file within our drawables. So if we double click that, we can come over to our activity. We can see kind of a preview of what this looks like. And you'll see that we get this like elongated rectangle with rounded corners. So I'm going to go through and apply this drawable to each and every button within our activity. All right, so I finally applied all the backgrounds to each of our buttons and we can come over and take a look at the preview and they're looking a little grim, I'm not gonna lie. So we're gonna fix it up a little bit. You can see that we can't really read the text on the buttons. So I wanna take that and set it to white and I wanna add a margin in between our buttons so they're not butted up against each other. I'm gonna come up to the first button, our clear button, and I'm gonna define a margin for it and I'm gonna change the text color. So the way we change the text color is by typing in Android again, colon, and then all we have to do is type in text color. Pretty simple. And then we're gonna set this to white. And if you didn't know, white is six Fs. And now we can come over and you'll see that our button is now white. So I'm gonna apply that to each of our buttons and I'm also gonna add a margin to it. So we can type in Android, scroll down one, and we're gonna choose the layout margin. And I'm gonna set that to five DP. And now you'll see that there is this little border around our button and it kind of makes it look a little bit nicer. Then there's one last change that I'd like to make to our buttons and that's changing the height. They're a little bit too small or skinny. So I'm gonna come over to our Android layout height, double click that and I'm gonna give it a value of 70 DP. And then we'll come back over and you can see this looks nice. So I'm gonna go through and apply these changes to each of our buttons and then I'll come back. All right, so I went through and applied all the changes to our buttons and you'll see that the text is just a little bit too small now, now that we made our size a little bit bigger. So I think what we're gonna have to do is go through and change the text size. And the way we do this 
and I know this is starting to get a little bit repetitive, is by typing in Android colon, and then we have to type in text size, and then we'll give it a size of 24 SP. Now make sure you use SP rather than DP because when we're defining text sizes in Android, you have to use SP. DP is used for defining the layout sizes, and then we use SP for text sizes. Now, if we take a look at the preview, you can see that the text is much more readable. Now, you can change the size to whatever you want, but I'm going to keep it at 24 SP. Now, before I go through and add this new text size to each of our buttons, I want to change our clear button and our equals button to a different color so they stand out a little bit more. And the way we can do this is by coming back over to our XML and then I'll make sure you're referencing the button that you want to change the background to. So in our case, we want to change the clear button. So I'm going to come down to the very end and we're going to use Android colon and then we're going to type a background tint. And what this is going to do, it's going to essentially overlay a color to the background that was defined within our drawable resource, the circle file that we created. So I already picked out a color before. I'm going to use this red color for clear. You can pick whatever color you want, but I'm just going to use red. And then we're going to come down to our equals button. I believe this is all the way at the bottom. And we're going to add the same exact thing to this button as well, except I think we're going to make it a color of green rather than red. So we type in background tint, hit enter, and then again, I already have a color picked out. So then I'll use this green color right here. And now if we take a look at our preview, you can see that this looks a lot nicer. So I'm going to go through and change the text sizes and we should be good with our main buttons right here. All right, so I got all the text sizes changed for our buttons and we can take a look at the preview and it's starting to look a lot better than what it looked like at the start of this video. The next thing that I'd like to do is change our backspace button. Right now it's blank and you literally can't see it. But one thing that I did notice at the start of this video is that I forgot to make this an image button. So we're just gonna change this tag to image button. And the reason we're changing it to an image button rather than a regular button is because I'd like to use an icon that's built into Android. They have like a built-in backspace icon that we can use. So the first step in creating this button is we're going over to our resource folder, the drawable folder, and then within here, we're gonna create another new file. So you right click on the drawable folder, new, and then click drawable resource file. And then this, I'm gonna name it backspace. And then keep all the defaults again and click okay. And now this file is gonna look really similar to our circle file that we created earlier in this video. So we can look at the XML associated to our new backspace file by going over to the top right hand corner, clicking this middle button, and then we can see the code associated with this file. Then like in our circle file, we're gonna to have to add an item. So we type in the item tag, close this guy, then I'm gonna hit enter. And then what we're gonna to wanna to do is reference the icons that are built into Android Studio. The way we do this is by typing in Android colon drawable. And then within these quotation marks, we're gonna go add Android. And then I'm gonna click this first one. This might not pop up for you, so you might have to scroll through this or you can just type in what's on screen now. And then I'm gonna hit enter. And now if we look at the preview, you'll see that we get this nice backspace icon that we're gonna use for our image button. So then there's a few more attributes that I want to add to this so it fits within the size of our image button. We're going to define a width and a height. The way we do that is by typing in Android colon width. Set this equal to, let's go 40 DP. And then we're going to need a height as well. So we type in Android colon height equals, and we're going to set this to the same exact thing as above 40 DP. So now that we have this new backspace drawable, we can actually overlay this onto our image button that we created earlier. But before we do that, I wanna give it a background. The way we do that is by typing in Android again, colon, and then background. And we're gonna give it the same background that we gave all of our other buttons. So we're gonna reference our drawable resource and then the forward slash circle file that we created earlier in the video. And then we could take a look at the preview. And now you can see we just had this blank image button over here. The next step is to overlay the icon that we just created. So this is what separates the regular button from the image button is that the image button allows you to overlay an icon or some other image. And the way we can do that is by typing in app forward slash SRC and then it's compact C-O-M-P-A-T and we're going to set that equal to and we just have to reference our new drawable that we created. Come down, it's right here. So the drawable backspace hit enter and now we can take a look at the preview and you'll see that we have our icon overlaid onto our new button. So our backspace button is starting to look a lot better but if we take a look at our image button in our XML you'll see that we have a warning 
If we hover over this, you could see that it's missing a content description. So the way we could fix this is by coming down to this attribute that we defined right here, this text. All we have to do is change this to content description, and then this error should go away. And then you'll also see if we come back over to the preview that this is butted up against the screen. So I think if we just copy and paste a margin from one of our buttons, so we use, we use Android layout margin of five DP. So we'll just copy and paste that into here. And then you'll see that it now has a margin of five and it looks uniform with all the other buttons. All right, so the last thing we're gonna have to do is change our text view. So if we come over to the preview, we could take a look and you'll see our text view, all this is gonna do is just display text. It's not gonna allow us to edit anything or write in our own stuff. So with this view, we're not gonna be able to input anything. So we're gonna come back over to our XML and actually change this to an edit text. And now when we change this, we are gonna get a few warnings. And so there's a few things that the edit text is gonna want. It's gonna want an autofill hint so we're gonna set this to false because we don't want it to give hints while the user is typing in anything. So we set that to false and then we hover over this and now you can see that we have no input type specified, but we're just gonna set this to none because we wanna be able to put in whatever we want. And then the last thing we're gonna do is ignore any labels. So we just, we're not gonna assign a label to this at all. And then to make this look a little bit better, what I wanna do is change the text size so we can read a little bit more. So you type in Android colon and then we'll set the text size and then remember, we have to use SP when we're dealing with text sizes. I'm gonna set this to 36 SP. One other thing I wanna do, when the user starts typing in stuff, I want it to go from right to left, rather from left to right. So the way we can do this is by changing the text alignment. So we type in Android again, colon, and then we'll type in text alignment. And then we're gonna align this to the end of our edit text. So you type in text end. And then this will align it over to the right. And then one other thing we're gonna have to do is set this to zero DP, just like our button. So then our edit text will span the width of whatever the screen size is. So we can take a look at the preview and you can see this looks a lot better. It's more legible and the user will actually be able to type in values that they wanna calculate. All right, so I finally think we have the layout completed. What I wanna do now is run this application on the emulator. The way we do this is by coming up to the top right hand corner this top navigation bar, you could come over and select the emulator that you wanna use, or if you have your physical device plugged in, you can use that as well. I'm just gonna use the Pixel 2, and then you come right over to this play button and click it. And what this is gonna do is install your application onto the emulator, and then you'll be able to use your app as if it were on a real phone. This is the application that we made. We have all of our buttons here. Right now they don't do anything. And then we changed our text view to an edit text. So this allows us to come in here and actually edit the text within this text view. All right, so it looks like everything's working. I think I'm gonna end the video here because it's starting to get a little bit too long. In the next video, I'm planning on disabling this keyboard so it doesn't pop up when the user clicks the edit text. This will allow us to actually use our buttons. And I wanna actually install the math parser that will be evaluating our equations. If you guys have any questions or you weren't able to get something to work correctly, just leave a comment down below and I'll help you out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.